Hello and you're very welcome to another show of the General Podcast. I'm John Wan. Of course, this podcast brought to you by orgrich.com. Here's the local JMAC podcast to get 15% off on their website. And today I'm joined by former cross and footballer Johnny Murder to talk about this year's 2022 PWC All-Stars. Uh, the latest news on the managerial front and of course cross Glen's win on Sunday in the Arma Senior Final. So lots to talk about today. Johnny be boy, Johnny be bad. It's good to see you again. You can hear and see me all right. Yeah, all good, John. Nice, nice to hear from you, big man. Good stuff, good stuff. Um, good to see you again, my man. Obviously, you're basking in the glory of Cross McGlynn. Uh, this sounds really exhausting to say it, winning their 46th, 47th Armagh County title. Aaron Kernan winning the 17th. Uh, not bad innings. No, I was looking, it was great to be back. It's just a relief, um, I suppose, after the last two years, John. Um, we, we, we lost two county finals and, and, you know, probably very unlucky circumstances in both of them where we were well in control. So, you know, it was good, really good for the young lads to get over the line uh, and back to winning ways. Um, and just that experience of, of, of winning the county title and, and what they're going to learn now from, from a Ulster, Ulster campaign is... Uh, Look at his back where we want to be. That's that's the longest job. Uh, the most important thing for, for for us was getting was getting the win our man and um, and just getting that experience into our young players. That's that's first and foremost. Mm, yeah, obviously it was, a, it was a great day for the Cross Glen lads. And in, in fairness, first couple of minutes maybe it looked a bit cagey, and Graymore were really up for it, but I think the class really did uh, show through uh, from the Rangers. I suppose Johnny, so was what impressed you most about the Cross Glen performance? Obviously, we've seen Keane McConnell getting out of the match, Aaron Kernan running up and down the field, looking as a fiddle as ever, and obviously Reed having a big say from midfield. And Jamie probably was quiet enough, relatively quiet from his standards, but. I suppose he didn't really need to be top of the pop or across the length of the line, but what impressed you most? Yeah, well, I suppose it wouldn't be just really um, on Sunday that really impressed me most, but I've, I've been really impressed with us all throughout the championship. Um, with some some young players have really stood up to the mark. Young Tom Stuffy is a prime example uh, in cornerback. Maybe didn't have his uh, maybe didn't have his uh, one of his best games the other day, but throughout the championship he he had been excellent. And really putting the shoulder to the wheel. Um, I, I was speaking to Darren Kern on the field briefly after the game, congratulate him. And, um, uh, you know, like I said to him, he was absolutely exceptional again, mm. Mary. He was, he was absolutely, you know, he was absolutely flying again, Mary. Like, I, I actually couldn't believe um, the game that he had and how he's fit to get up and down the field. Yeah. Um, and, and I think Stephen's done a good job and, and, and Tony's in there along with him and, and a few of the guys have done a really good job in the work on Aaron's workload throughout the season mm. um, and getting him, especially with his age, and getting him to, to, to the pace with exactly bang on um, for when it was needed the most. And, and he, he, had, he, had a, he had a damn good game the other day, but I thought in, in, in the semi-final he was probably... Probably our man the match or, or close to it. Um, Keen McConville the other day was excellent. Um, you know, but this is this is the thing. You know, in in and and this is this is something that we used to be very good at when we were winning. Was that if somebody maybe didn't have a good game, John, somebody else stood up to the mark. It was a team effort. You know, there was always somebody putting their shoulder to the wheel, um, and something was no different. Now it was a big day for Graham Moore, and, and you know let's not take away from them. So first ever county final, um, you know, and and they started okay, but I thought they looked a bit nervous and uh, throughout the first half, and maybe didn't get to express themselves, you know, fully. Um, I just thought we were always in control. We were never look like getting beaten, and, and I suppose if I'm being brutally honest, I don't think Cross really get out of maybe third gear. Or maybe maybe didn't need to. Yeah, that's um, just take it your right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well look at the like that and, and you know, Keane was excellent. Um just eight points by Keane, four frees, Johnny. That's Rain on eight kick four, like and Finnegan's goal as well. Yeah, oh, like, yes, are yes are hitting four, my man. Finnegan Finnegan's been a real find, you know. Like we 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 have seen this in him at underage, has been absolutely excellent. 
Um, but you never know what what a player is going to bring when he comes out of comes out of minor. Like it's a whole different ball game. So he, he's definitely stood up to the mark, and he's very young. He's only going to improve and get better. Mm-hmm. We string we call him, um, and he he's been excellent. You know, Jamie was very quiet. Um, Jamie was absolutely excellent again. Murray as well. Yeah. You know, so the, there's room for improvement in his performances. Uh, and to be honest. Yeah. Look, people have to be realistic. You know, Jamie, Jamie hasn't played at that level in a while. Um, yeah, and it's going to take a few games. It's going to take a good, a good ten games. I feel of championship games before we start seeing a, 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 an out and out Jamie again. Yeah. You know, um, I, 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 I like to see Jamie start to threaten goals now and I didn't I didn't I only had a brief congratulations to him after the game and it's great to have him back. It is, yeah. You know the old Jamie had a serious aim for goal. Um and that's the one not 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 just I want to see but that's the one we're gonna to need to see. we if you're gonna win big games you're gonna need big goals. Um yeah yeah you know I probably feel to be to be brutally honest I probably feel we're not scoring enough goals but that's something that that, that Jamie could maybe add, you know. Yeah, like that goal Sunday was exceptional. Like I think the ball in by Rain O'Neill, I think BBC had it up on Twitter and well, I think everyone anyone that got seen the game, like the ball by Rain was exceptional. The finish was probably top class out of this world in fairness and really old school kind of cross the glen. But I think Jamie, in fairness to his credit, like he did kind of keep going, he was being tightly marked. You know, there was that bit of kind of erasmus before the game, lads were kind of pushing into him and you know, trying to get into his head and, you know, he stuck to his guns and I suppose as well as that, he's always going to be the target. So, Graham Moore, in fairness, did target him and then a lot of their focus was on Jamie and that maybe freed up the likes of McConville and Finnegan inside and maybe even Reed O'Neill to a degree. So, you know, if Jamie can distract one or two lads, Johnny, that's going to be a benefit going forward. Well, well, well this is it, you know, like, like in fairness to Graham Moore, they're just they're, like let's call it a spade a spade. They're just not at the level, and and you know they were they were going around putting out fires as best they could. But like you know, the Rain's ball in was excellent, and it was an excellent finish. But it was very naive defending. There's there's no point in saying it wasn't. And and the goalkeeper probably had a lot to answer for too. You know, it was it was a, it was a shot from distance. Um, you know so. He, listen, uh, young Keel seen his opportunity and he took it and he buried it, you know. But you're not when you come up against bigger teams and stiffer opposition, you the, the house isn't going to be as open as that, John, and not just be as easy, you know. Whereas Jamie, Jamie's very good when he's back to to to, to his old self at picking the pocket of 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 even you know lots of. Lots of stellar defenders around there. Jamie was very good at, at whisking his way in and, and finish and take goals. You know, um, again, good opposition. You know, so we'd be hoping to see more of that there. Uh, and yeah. it's probably something, another thing I probably want to note is that Rian, over the course of the championship, um, Rian is sacrificing his own game. And that's, and he's doing that to get over the line. It goes to show how mature Rain is. With Ashley now injured, Rain has sacrificed his own game to do the best thing for the team. Uh, 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 and to me, uh, he, he's actually shown to be an out and out leader by doing it. There's stages in the Murray game where Rain went into full back, catching balls in his own square. You know, it, it, like, people don't see that. You know, people will not see that. Even with Armagh, there's times Ryan had to come out and play out the field for Armagh. Of course, they didn't have that option. You know, it, it, it'd be easy for Ryan to stand on the edge of the square and just say, right, give me the ball in, give me the ball, boys. But when you don't have... <laughs> the problem is we need a couple of Ryan's, you know. And yeah. One to get the ball and one to get into him. And uh-huh. listen, um, we're very lucky to have a player of his calibre. Um I don't know if you've seen those. Like he kicked a free kick in, in in the final. It must have been sixty yards out. I seen it too. Yeah. Off the ground, you know, he kicked another one from an absolutely outrageous angle. Yeah. Just getting up off the ground, um, from play, absolutely outrageous score. You know, rain rain has this in spades. You know, so, mm-hmm. um, 
it's just a pity, John, he has to sacrifice his game. But then again, we're, we're, we're lucky to have someone of his caliber who can who can get around the field like a gazelle. Um, yeah. His passing ability, his striking off the ground, his scoring ability from play, his, his high field. You know, he, he's becoming the out and out all rounder. Um, and he's, he's, he's just getting better. They tried to rattle him at the start of the game. Mm. It didn't work. Uh, he just upped the tempo. Um, he, he, look at Rain's, Rain's only getting better, and that's he, I think Rain potentially is going to be up there with the, with the top couple of guys in Ireland very soon. Mm, if not, if not already there, Johnny. If not already there, and I suppose so. It's that kind of point. Whereas you know, Rain can kind, of, kind of play midfield or full forward and kind of drift about the place. But I think it kind of brings back to that point as well. When teams are kind of coming coming up against Cross McGlen now, you have a lot of fires put out. It's got back to that time where these cross a good Cross McGlen team is really coming through again. And obviously, the likes of Aaron Kieran and as I said to yesterday, supporting the run and play and the likes of O'Neill coming from midfield and even uh, Key McConville having a really good championships over uh, to date played really well so you know there's a few fires put out from any team that will be coming up against this uh, cross for Glenn potential juggernaut once again yeah but I uh, you look at the, the there's no point in, there's no point in people getting carried away like they're they're, they're probably going to go into Ulster as big underdogs um, even though it's it's cross for Glenn like I'd be the first to put my hand up they're going to be underdogs and they have to get used to that tag Anybody else thinks or not, it just doesn't know anything about football. You know, it's it's the team's in complete transition. It's it's probably just coming out of it, and, and it's a very very young team that's inexperienced at that level. Um, like I said, bar them a couple of players, James Morgan, Aaron Kieran, and Paul Goose, uh, bar a few players of that caliber. You know, uh, Rain did play in Ulster. You know, but Steve Morris played and also but maybe a season, you know. So uh, okay, Rain has, has county experience, but it's a it's a whole different ball game uh, in also club football and, and it's 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 tight pitches and hard weather and, and, and a lot of stuff does be let go. Um it's good it's good it's good honest tight football. I used to love it. Uh, and really look at you learn the most in it, but it takes a few games to, to, to find your bearings and you know, crosses. Listen, I, I don't think there's any real big juggernauts uh, in in club football at the moment. Now, I'm not saying I'm, I'm, I'm being realistic with that. I think probably Kill McCord potentially, but the, the probably from what I seen, I know if you, I I watch a good few of the Dublin Championship games. I thought they're mediocre enough. Uh, compared to the standard that you will be used to in Dublin, yeah, yeah, there's no right, there's, there's no right away team just yet. Like it yeah. looks like the Kilku yeah. could beat Kilmacod, Kilmacod could break, beat the likes of Kilku, Cross McGlen could, you know, Glen. Like it, it, it's good to kind of have that competitive championship because years ago it, we didn't have is. that. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, it is. And, and you know, their Skyler, for example, is in, is on the right end of the draw there. Um, to maybe you, you, you'd feel that they, you know, they get over the Fermanagh champions. They're going to go in as favourites, you know. It's a it's a good it's a good game to to you know basically find your bearings, get one get one up on the board, move on to the next round, you know. Uh, cross cross is a stiff stiff task. There's no doubt about it. You know they haven't been in Ulster in a few years. They're a very young team. They're coming into the primary round. They're meeting a strong enough opponent in Bala Bay who who, who bet Scott Stone convincingly in the final. Um, even though Scottsdale and I felt all year was was there for the taking, and, and I probably said it, um, and I would feel, I, I'm being brutally honest, I'd, I wouldn't feel that Kilku or that Balabay is unbeatable because, you know, I was with Castle Rainey last year and, and, and we bat them in the championship. You know, they are beatable, they can be got at. Um, but it's definitely no foregone conclusion for Cross, a young team. And, and you know, it's it's a tight end of the draw. The winners of that play is Kilku, all earned champions. Mm-hmm. You know, they're seasoned campaigners at this. They can play the ugly game. They can, and, and, and on heavy pitches and bad weather, you know, they suit that sort of game, a game of nutrition, and they can do it very, very well. You know, and they're very well organised in that game. If, they, if you want to go down the stretch with them, they're extremely fit. 
And, and one thing Cross will have is fitness. Cross is very, very fit. Now, but the, the, the big talent here for me again, Balabay, is that Balabay with 10 or 15 minutes ago with down tools, you know, that's what they do. They like to get a nice, healthy lead if they can coming into the stretch. If, if, if it's nip and tuck coming into 10 or 15 minutes ago, I would tip my hat to cross to get over the line. I think I think our fitness will be far more superior than Balbay's. Mm. That's just from seeing them last year and this year. I, I would be convinced of that. Yeah. But we have a hell of a lot of fires to try and put out. Um, you know, the two the two McGuinnesses for Balbay, excellent. Oh, the Drew Wiley there has an awful lot of experience as a county player. You know, uh, Jack Finley's still playing playing away there. He's rolling back the years. Like Finley, well, pe- people saying to me, "Oh, his age, blah blah, whatever." And, and Aaron Cairns is the exact same. But 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 the big thing with Finley, Finley is he's a big man, and he tends to play in corner forward. So it's a lot easier to marshal a big man when he's playing at full forward. Like you would see, you know, um, you would see different players there and also club that had to play at that level. Big Kevin from Guidor, you know. You could maybe put a big man in and, and wrestle with him and, and break ball down, you know. But it's very difficult to do that with a corner forward, a corner forward at, at, at maybe six foot two or three with good feet, good aim for a score, gets a bit of room, you know. Um, and they have, a, they have a good few players to take watch. And Tom Kerr is, is excellent as well for Valabé. Serious free taker, an inside 45. He will put it over the bar, uh, you know. So, they do have a lot of experience, um, and they've county experience, and they've, and they've a lot. Listen, they've a few players across the cross cross border, so I'm looking forward to it. I'm go, I'm looking forward to seeing where we're at, and, and it'll be a big test. Yeah, yeah, it's hard, it's hard to believe the first Ulster appearance since uh, 2019. But obviously, every great team goes through transition. Lots of cross Bay now, uh, not next weekend. This or not or not this weekend. Next weekend, so that'll be an enticing game by all accounts. And I suppose uh, news in recent days. I suppose yesterday, last night, uh, Johnny, uh, David Burke has been ratified as the New York's Common Senior Football Team Manager. The former Wicklow boss has been appointed on a three-year term. Former Donegal footballer Mark McHugh, who won All Ireland as a player with Donegal in 2012, was a part of Burke's back regime as a coach. Burke guided his native Kildare to All Ireland under 20 glory in 2018. Uh, Brian Carroll, Roscommon GA County Board chair- Chairman, said Roscommon GA are absolutely delighted with the appointment. David Burke is a young, enthusiastic, enthusiastic manager, which he definitely is, uh, who has gained much experience in this ma- uh, managerial career through club, college, and county. So there we go. David Burke and Mark McHugh are set for the Roscommon senior footballers. Nice and young, nice and fresh, Johnny. Yeah, I think it was. Uh, I probably think it was a good appointment by Roscommon. Um, I, I, I did think when I looked at the lineup for it that he would have been my favourite to tip the hat on him. You know, as you say, he, he, he's a young coach coming through. I didn't know until you just said there that, that Mark was on the ticket. It's probably um, a shrewd enough appointment as well yeah. uh, you, you have a good background in, in, in football or there when our, um, you know so finished up play for Donegal quite early too yeah yeah well yeah but he, a lot, he played a lot of football too and a lot of miles in the clock and you know um, you, you don't know you, well I don't know the personal reasons why maybe he finished up a bit early could have been niggly injuries or whatever you know you don't know but it's good to see him go down the road as a, as a coaching and, and it's probably there's a good few of them has gone down that road with Donegal guys, um, you know. But I, I I do think it's a good appointment, uh, and I wish Davy the best of luck. Uh, and and for a young coach that, that's coming through the ranks and, and he's put in a lot of hard work, uh, and he's put in a lot of work with underage, especially in coaching, which is good to see. Um, so he knows what's coming through in a lot of counties. So yeah, look at uh, listen, his common job is is is, is tough. Um, there's no point saying it's not, um, but they're they definitely suit. Roscommon definitely suits uh, a wee bit of football being played, and hopefully David will do that along with McHugh and not be too play too negative. But I don't think that suits Roscommon. We have seen it a couple of years ago that very negative football didn't suit them at all. So they were, they were excellent forward line. Um, 
and I'd be sort of hoping that they play to their strengths. And and, and I do I, I do feel, John, that I think we've seen it this year, um, and we chatted with this on the podcast that you know football wins at the end of the day, and and, and we've seen it in a right few counties where they went back to 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 the, you know high pressing game like Mayo staying high there, for example, and uh, tackling high up the field, you know, stuff like that, rather than putting, you know, 14, 15 men behind the ball inside of 45. So I'll, I'll be, I'll be, I I be, want to see more of that. And the spectators want to see more of that. They want to see more football like that. So it, it's it's hopefully David will continue that because um, I definitely think that football suits was common and, and they're, they're a beauty to watch when they're, when they're rolling, you know. Yeah, there's some of the best forwards in Ireland <clears throat> on their day as well, Johnny. Like when you add in the likes of Tony Smith, Henry Smith, Connor Cox, the Murtas, like I know obviously a couple of years ago, as you referenced, maybe I thought they were playing maybe a bit, bit of a defensive style football, but I think it's, a, it's like it'd be brilliant now to see next year Burke getting the absolute best out of them players, Mark McHugh, instilling that confidence, belief that, you know, Roscommon could try to go on and win a kind of title and go forward because by God, Johnny, there's some absolutely brilliant footballers. Yeah, well, I think a team like that, um, the would say with certain teams there, uh, John, that certain teams need a couple of years to get a bit of work. Maybe the young players come through, stuff like that. You know, I think we're scamming as a team that's tailor-made for the likes of Burke and McHugh to go in and they can hit the ground running. Yeah. I really think that. I think it'll, it'll freshen the thing up. Mm-hmm. It, it'll be, you know, providing that he plays that a bit of attacking way, there's no problem. There's no. There's no. There's no. Not wrong with having a defensive structure in place. That's fine, you know, because you're going. To, you also need that too. But it's finding the correct balance, um, and that's what I want to see with Scotland do. And I think they, they could get a bounce. I think they could get a serious bounce of these guys. It's yeah. fresh. It's new. It's mm-hmm. young, um, and and you know, I think they'll do. I think they'll do just fine. I think they could be dangerous enough, maybe in contact. You know. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's definitely an interesting managerial appointment. And obviously, David Burke was on the Saturday game uh, last Saturday talking to Damien Lawler about it, and it came true. David Burke's the New York Scotland manager, and obviously, uh, Donegal, of course, have finally, finally got a new uh, managerial team in the line of Paddy Carr and a good Armand man, Aidan Work, to give him a hand this year or even next year. Johnny, suppose, what was the take on that? Yeah, well, I think uh, going with the GEA circles and speaking to a lot of people and, and even our own podcasts and stuff, the different guys from all over Ireland, different coaches, um, there was a few eyebrows raised. Uh, you know, there's no point in saying there wasn't. Definitely in the media circles as well. And, and you know, I probably thought it was a bit harsh, John. Um, I thought it was harsh. And, and, and you know, I, I just given me, give me a few reasons on why I thought it's harsh. I think uh, I think maybe some of the Donegal fans and, and maybe the media needs to be a wee bit pragmatic about the whole thing. Um, you know, you you like like Donegal fans think that that Donegal should be competing for an All Ireland every year. You know what? Oh yeah, no, don't get me wrong. That's it, it's okay. To, it's okay to think that you know, but. I think you have to be a wee bit realistic too. Like Bonner got a hard time down there. You know, it's it's I think the the writing's on the wall and it took them so long to find like I'd say a Donny Gall, like I'm hazarding a guess here, I don't know. But I'd say they made twenty phone calls. Oh you yeah, know? definitely. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, Malik, I think Malik Malik your work was approached and he just stuck with Glenn, so yeah. Yeah, like you know, so listen the, the and that's only that's only you know I'd say twenty I'd say there's I'd say there's, Jim McGinnis got a phone call he did yeah you know like, so you know whenever you have something like that happening you need to be pragmatic and go you need to stand back and, and don't go don't go all fans need to stand back and listen you know I'll probably get a bit of stick from a few of them for it you know because I'll be friendly with a few of Donny Gallers and you know but did, and I said this to them they have to be realistic you know you can't. You can't say it right if you if you put around twenty phone calls and a lot of coaches says it wasn't that appealing for various reasons. You have to say the writings on the wall here and say why. Mm. <laughs> you know, at, listen, there's there's damn good footballers in Donegal. There's absolutely no doubt about it. You know, and some of the best footballers, Michael Murphy was was, you know, up there one of the best footballers you'll see um, in county football for ten or fifteen years. Up there, definitely up there with them. You know, a class act. 
sacrifices his game as well to go and do stuff, dirty work out the field. A guy you have a lot of time for. Um, you know, there's there a couple of stellar, stellar defenders in there as well. There's one in there is only after retiring. Absolutely monster over the defender. Has been about a long time, McGee. Excellent fella as well. Hard as nails. You love to see it. You know, McBrady as well on his day is as good as what you'll see as well. You know, and of others, that's only a couple, to name a few. They have a load more. There's, there's, Donegal is a passionate place and, and there's damn good footballers in Donegal. But I feel, and this is from the outside, I feel that something just hasn't clicked up there for a long time. And McGuinness was fit to get that trick out of them. That's fine. Yeah. But there's something just not right. And um, whether it's the expectations of the fans, like our mm-hmm. fans went up to went up to Donegal uh, for the first round of the championship, and and you know our fans were outnumbered Donegal fans mm-hmm. at a home game of the championship. Mm-hmm. Maybe lost the game. That's fine. You know, but that shouldn't be happening, John. Yeah. You know, like they need to get behind their team. They need to get behind the management. You know, Aidan O'Rourke has, has, has a serious amount of experience. Like I was saying to you uh, uh, just off, off air here, Aidan's a serious amount of experience, you know, with University in Belfast. You know, he's worked at, at various county teams, you know, and, and, he, and he's talked a bit, of, a bit of flack there, and I don't understand why. Uh, Paddy Carr is the same. He, he managed Kilmacud in all Ireland club. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he's, he is experienced with different county teams as well. Yeah. Experienced at top level, top level club teams. You know, so I'd like to see them give the fellas a chance. Be a wee bit more realistic. You know, let them do their thing. Donny Gall is a lot of older players. And, and, and I think it will be a wee bit in transition. I'd like to see the fellas get a three-year term and then see what Donny Gall can do and, and back the challenging for Ulsters. Mm-hmm. You know, and even... Even then, maybe get to the last, the last eight. I'd say would would be a good reflection on progress on Donegal. Yeah, yeah, because I think expectations have been fairly uh, through the roof the last couple of years. But it'll be interesting to see can Paddy O'Rourke, sorry, not Paddy O'Rourke, Paddy Carr and Aidan O'Rourke um, settle the expectations. I suppose going into next year, but it's definitely an interesting appointment, and uh, no, make no doubt about it. I suppose Johnny, obviously. Um, this morning, uh, the PWC All Star Football Team for 2022 was named, and obviously, I will read it out, and we can chew the fat on it when I'm done. So, goalkeeper was Shane Ryan from Ratmore and Kerry. The defenders was Chris McCaig, Slot Neil Derry, um, Jason Foley, Kerry, Liam Silk, Galway, Tyg Murray, Tyg Murley, Kerry, John Daly, Galway, his father going years ago. So the family tradition has to keep going on. Uh, Gavin White, Kerry. And then midfielders was Connor Glass and Killian McDade. Fords was Paddy Clifford Kerry, Sean O'Shea Kerry, Kieran Kenny Dublin, David Clifford Kerry, Damien Comer Galway, Shane Walsh Galway, and the PWC GA, GPA Footballer of the Year nominees are, of course, David Clifford, Killian McDade, and Shane Walsh. And the PWC GA, GPA Young Footballer of the Year nominees are Lee Gannon, Eden Doherty, and Jack Glynn. Mr. Johnny Murda. In fairness, the first time in a couple of years we can't really have big complaints about the All Star team, but you have a few cases on it. Yeah, I wouldn't look at it. It's, it's. I think it's it's very close to what a lot of people you know expected, um, and there's always one or two players that you, you probably feel, um, or maybe har- harsh done by. Uh, I probably feel Tom O'Sullivan from Kerry is 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 you know he had a poor game in the final, granted, but you know he, he had a he had a stellar campaign bar the final, uh, absolute a juggernaut of a defender, um, you know top top draw. And this is the thing, like if if there's any county team picking your team or the managers picking them in the morning, Tom O'Sullivan will be in it. There's absolutely no doubt about it. Tom O'Sullivan will be in it. Um, You know, so look look at... Equally, you can make the argument for the other end of the field as well. With Comer had a quiet All-Ireland final. Um, 
you know. So, listen, I think there's different arguments. I did see the different comments and stuff on social media and you know whatever, like keyboard warriors. You know, Tom O'Sullivan got roasted in in a, in a, in yeah, but it's all right saying that. But you know, Shane Walsh, everything done that day, just turned the gold. Um, you know. So look, at, there's, there's there's a couple of different arguments, um, but somebody had to mark him, John. You know, somebody had to mark him. Somebody had to have have, have the Gahunis to take him on. You know, um, I probably felt, and I, I did say it on the podcast after. Uh, it's one of the things that I felt maybe that Jack maybe and his management team got wrong. Um, I probably. You know, we had we had a conversation about it before the All Ireland final, if I remember back correctly. And after that, I I I, I sort of tip me hat to somebody else to mark Shane Walsh. But look, at these things happen. At the end of the day, it's irrelevant really because they won the All Ireland. So you know, that's Kerry was there to win the All Ireland and they won it. So whatever way they felt fit to do it and to sacrifice whatever defenders or whatever it is. The game plan worked at the end of the day, so um, I do feel Tom is hard done by. But there's good cases to be made for the rest. Um, midfield, Connor Glass. Can't really complain about midfield. I think it's very. No, 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 no. <coughs> um, I don't think he could really complain. I, I, I think, I think maybe even in the team that I picked, he might even in midfield. I think he was actually, and I think I had Rain at full forward. Um, I can't just mind off the top of my head, but I think I did have Connor in midfield. He's an excellent player, and it goes to show you, even with Glenn there, you know, from me come back from Australia, that that you know the type of professional, the type of player he is, is exceptional, and he's another reason why Derry uh, got so far as they did. Um, so, you know, I, I think it was good to see him in the team, and, and probably deserved. Definitely the same as Chrissy or Connor back. So it was good to see them fellas into the stellar campaign. Um probably one 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 for me uh, I felt um was lucky to get in was Kieran Kilkenny. Um I think there's a good case to be made. You know, I'm just I'm just by the way, I'm just calling it on, on last season because yeah. I think again as a manager, if you're picking a team, Kilkenny, you <laughs> Kilkenny be in it. Um, but I think just for last season, Dublin's been relegated to Division Two. You know, to, they didn't really come up against stiff opposition, and, and when they did, they were put out of the championship. So, you know, um, I think if we're going down the road, they're just, you know, players because they are, you know, up there. You know, you could equally equally say that you know James McCarthy has been the best player I think for Dublin maybe of all time. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and he's not in it. So look at that. I, I think uh, on how players and what they mean for different teams. Um, and don't get me wrong, I I understand the argument by the way that that you know, and I said it at the time. People talk about Ethan Rafferty for goals and rain, and I says, look at Lance, whatever chance we have, and maybe get one all star. I don't think we're getting two, um, you know, because at the end of the day, you, you're put out in the quarter final and, and not in the, in the semi final or final. So, you know, it, it is very harsh. I just think that rain was absolutely exceptional, and, and I do think that any manager in the country would 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 definitely have him in your team because, like I said, he, he he's He's a guy that can just play anywhere, <laughs> anywhere on the field. He'll do a job for you. Mm-hmm. You know, even even the ball he played in the Rory Gergen in the championship from from the throw up, that there is absolutely exceptional. You know, the long distance that we're seeing, not just once or twice, but week in week out, he's doing it again for the club. You know, that's the, that free taking ability, and and like like Sean O'Shea has done and and. and Sean kicked one there from that, out in the sideline there for the, for the club, you know. So in the in the Kerry Championship, so look at these guys are exceptional players, and uh, it's great to see, you know. So it, it probably rain lost out because Armagh just didn't get far enough, um, and it's a pity because I do think he's up there. Probably a fella as well. Uh, you can make a, an argument for would be Shane McGuigan, 
Mm. Absolutely excellent audio. Um, turned into Ray Markey forward um, and, and, and has, has led from the front, you know, and there's a stellar, there's a stellar uh, uh, argument to be made for him. Um, you know, the one, the one I did think was, was a shoe in and look what I got it wrong. I did think rain was a shoe in. But look at uh, the journalists and these guys know better than me. Mm, yeah, no, it's definitely interesting. Of course, it'll it'll spark you no know, uh, a lot of the bit. Of course, the All Stars are tomorrow evening, so uh, between now and then, uh, I'd say the WhatsApp groups are absolutely bouncing around. I suppose if we chew the fat on it, Johnny. I suppose Shane Ryan between the sticks. I know it was a big case for Eaton Rafferty uh, to get in between the sticks, but Kerry all all Ireland winners. Shane Ryan was fairly exceptional all year. Oh, for me, for me, he, he, I, I depict him, to be honest. And, and that's not, I think it was a bit of a, it was a fanfare around Ethan and the way he played, and he was brilliant. And it's something kieran has been working on for a long time, and he's got it right. And, and fair juice to, for Ethan, because he's an outfield player, and fair juice to him going in and doing a good job. Um, but I think with, 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 with Ryan, you know, like in fairness, I think he conceded one goal, you know. Yeah, literally, yeah. The one Everton there is to win. Everton was put in front of him to win it, so I don't think anybody can have any arguments. Um, and I would have picked him myself, and, and I thought he was excellent all year. So, um, fair juice to him, he had a goalkeeper. Yeah, no, I think he definitely deserves it this year anyway. And then moving on to the defender and things, uh, Johnny, Chrissy McKeag. Probably the star, really, of both Derry and Slough Neil. I know we definitely maybe could have made a case for maybe Brendan Rogers to get in some there, somewhere as well, but you can't have everyone in. But yeah, Chrissy, he definitely deserves it. Yeah, well, look at it. I tell you, it's, it's another example of the quality of footballers that we're, we, we have at the minute at County, County Standard. Definitely at, at the last the last four or five teams, you know, like he's been absolutely excellent. He's be, he's, he, he's got the toughest job in every game to mark 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 top class forwards and he's come out in tops. Um I think he, <laughs> I read an article from him Fitzmaurus this, this morning and, and I think he had about five men in his pocket <laughs> and, uh, and Eamon was sort of saying like where are these boys all gonna sit in this pocket for room <laughs> for room and that's that's yeah. that, that's it. That's that's how good he was. He was absolutely excellent. Um you know, and, and another reason why Derry got so far as it did, Brandon Rogers was absolutely excellent as well. Top class baller, uh, you know, stellar defender. Um, but yeah, listen, I I think I think if 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 Tom Sorbin was getting in there, I don't think you, you could argue with who did get in, Silk got in and and, and uh, John Daly wasn't it? Got in on a half back. Uh, Chris McKeague, Jason Foley, Liam Silk, Ty Morley, John Daly, Gavin White. Yeah, John Daly and Silk. You couldn't argue with them from, from Galway. And, and I think, I think if Tom O'Sullivan gets one, he's he's probably robbing one off one of the other Kerry lads. To be brutally honest yeah. with you, yeah. Um, and and I probably, I think maybe Fitzmaurice said in the article. I think maybe Tom O'Sullivan has two or three all stars. Is that correct? Oh. I wouldn't say if it's Mars is too far wrong. I would say, yeah, Tom, yeah, Tom is definitely good. A nice amount of them already, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so look, at this. it's good to share it around too, so I don't think <laughs> don't think it'd be that right. Don't think it'd be that right. Absolutely, Johnny, absolutely. Jason Foley, Kerry, full back. Uh, yeah, full back, so yeah, can't really complain. I thought, that, I thought, I thought Foley's accent. Um, Foley, yeah. I'm a big fan of Jason Foley. Uh, and not even that, but I tell you why, John. Uh, it is an area, and if we if we if we roll back a good few years here, it's an area that that um, the carry has got a hell of a lot of flack for is the defence. Oh, big time, big time, yeah. The last five years, and the, the, in fairness to all them fellas, they've come up and took an awful lot of flack, and yeah. they had took a hell of a lot of flack down in carry. I can tell you that. Oh, you yeah. know, I'll be down brave and often, you know, and and uh, I have to tip my hat to them that whatever 
whatever abuse they got and whatever was said about them, and even on media was said about them, mm. they walked and walked and walked out their game. Uh, I definitely think Paddy Talley has really helped in that department, and, and uh, I thought Kerry defence was the difference this year. And the difference, as I say, the difference in winning and losing. You know, you can you can have Clifford up there all you want, and, and Sean O'Shea and these guys doing the damage, but if the defence isn't there to keep the keep the goals out along with the, a good goalkeeper, well then you know you're going to be on on, on the wrong end of it. But um, I, listen. I'm looking forward to seeing him again next year, and I think Foley was was excellent as well. You know. Yeah, yeah, no, he was. Uh, he was absolutely. It'd be interesting to see if uh, Paddy Talley stays put with the Kerry lads. I presume, and he is going to be staying where he is. And we have Liam Silk um, from Galway in a cornerback. Um, he had a great year, Liam, and came up short in the All Ireland final. He is not about for Galway next year, if my memory serves me correctly. I think he's going travel. Which is, uh, I didn't know that was disappointing. Uh, Liam Silk was absolutely excellent. Yeah. And then, um, you know, him, him, him and John Daly was, was tops. You know, so it's good to see them getting in. Uh, I don't think anybody could have much complaints about the two fellas. Um, I thought they a damn good year and a serious year for Galway. You know, um, I would really hope that he, 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 he do, that ends up not happening. Like, he, Galway, I don't think, could afford to... to to lose a man of that caliber uh, after especially you know maybe picking up an all-star and things like that he might he might uh, change his mind and put a shoulder to the wheel it'd be good to see yeah yeah no which is i suppose i'm just reading an article here pork joyce hopeful and uh, new zealand pound leave silk will be available 2023 Galway manager pork joyce is hopeful that leave silk will be able for next year's campaign after marriage that he experienced Defender is moving to New Zealand uh, to, continue, to continue his work as a doctor. So the travel bug seems to be hitting a lot of counties, Johnny. Um, what would be your take on the old travel for the intercounty players? Yeah, well, look, at, uh, I, I done a bit of travel myself back in the day. Um, you know, it, it's it's different times and stuff like that. Like, I suppose when you're talking about it with all Ireland contenders and, and, and teams at the top level, you don't like to see it. Um, you know, but players put in a big effort. It's a big commitment, and and you know, a guy like that who's a professional, and he's going there for work, uh, is is you know, it's probably a bit of a different situation. But um, I'm sure we could get him a doctor's job now. And about Ireland, there's, there's there's a big shortage of them, so you'd be hopeful that they could maybe sort them out, and and um, you know, you'd be maybe hoping. he just wants to go traveling too, like in Brazil. Oh, was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it too. He's done a lot of study and he's got his degree and he he's got his all star now. But you'd be hopeful, you'd be hoping that they got a taste for it now in Galway and, and they'd be looking to compete again at the top table uh, and try and get over the line. That's you know, it's not a flash in the pan, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, Johnny. I suppose completing the wing half back line is a Kerry man, Gavin White from Kerry. No surprises there, Johnny. No, oh, Gavin White's absolutely <laughs> outrageous. Um, I don't, th- I don't think uh, Kevin's to do big of a fan on him, is he? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, he's not here to defend his honour, so. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 no, no. We, we, yeah, we, yeah, I'm only, I'm only pulling his leg. Yeah, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a big fan of Gavin's, and, and um, I think, I think all the lads are. You know, he's, he's any lads in the pod with good words saving him, and you know, top class defender. No arguments there. He's 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 excellent, you know. And you could you could even put him on the on the short list for player of the year too. And you're at it. Um, but look at he's he's uh, Gavin's excellent. It's good to see. Um, looking forward to seeing him again next year. Absolutely, midfield Johnny probably picks itself. Connor Glass from Derry and Killian McDade Galway, um, two absolutely exceptional midfielders, and it's great to see. I suppose a caliber of midfielder coming back into the game because obviously we've seen the likes of obviously Brian Fenton really strangle hold of that the last couple of years, the likes of Darrow Shea in the past. So these two gentlemen are absolutely fine at it, uh, Johnny. Yeah, well, probably a wee bit different. Um, you know, than you know, Glass can get around the field, he's very mobile, serious hand, serious leap. Um Enjoyed himself the Monday after Glenn's win by the looks. Yeah, of well, that too. He, he uh, sees a nice, nice wee coffee business there. He closed her up just for the tuck the bank holiday, fair play to him. But uh, <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, the Glen boys, um, they enjoy a wee tip and after a win, fair play to them. Um, no different than ourselves in, in cross Glen. So, no, look, at it it's, It was great to see. And again, this is the calibre of football we were talking about, and, and we spoke about it to Eber Connor. You know, um, he's excellent. McDade, again, a different sort of midfielder. A guy who can get around the field, can yeah. score, can score heavily if, if you're not careful. Um, you know, Fenton, you, you mentioned Fenton there in, in different years. I've got, you know, probably slightly different. Uh, Fenton plays into the system. You know, I think the difference with McDade can lead. Fenton sort of needs somebody with him, I would feel, in that department. And he can be excellent, you know, and, and lets him express himself. James McCarthy being a prime example of an anchor. Uh, the man in control um, and talking to the guys around and, and, and leading out on the field. Kind of like, um, I don't know, obviously, obviously uh, you remember as, as well as anyone, kind of like Shane Ryan and Kieran Whelan back in the day, whereas Kieran Whelan kind of done all the donkey work and Shane Ryan was up and down, up and down, like a yo-yo kind of, kind of system. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, the Whelan, Whelan, Barry got the odd score and, and, and I remember him kicking a serious goal, but, you know, he, that wasn't his game. He was a serious fielder of the ball, yeah. you know, Serious, serious catcher of the ball and, and turnovers and power and strength. And you know, McDade can, can do all that and catch ball, he can turn over, but he can hit you hard, he yeah. can hit you on the break, he can score from distance. You know, um, a serious, seriously talented midfielder. And, and it's good to see some of that caliber, you know, that, that you know, and that's the way I feel midfielder is coming back again, where it's, it's turning the corner again. Where well, you're starting to see players, it's extremely mobile in the midfield. I can go and register scores uh, consistently, game in, game out. So, yeah, a, a, a fantastic year for Galway and an excellent player. Yeah, yeah, no two men absolutely deserve it. Make no doubt about it. I suppose moving on to the forward end of things, uh, Johnny, the half forward line was Paddy Clifford, Kerry, Sean O'Shea, Kerry, Kieran Kilkenny, Dublin. That is probably one of the best half forward lines I have seen for some years. Yeah, like I said, just on the season, I mentioned him here in Kilkenny, um, but over the course of the last 10 years, he's a, he's a serious baller. Um, yeah. See, I think that's the sixth all star, Johnny. Like, God almighty. He, 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 ma- he, makes, he makes Dublin tick and, and he, he's, he can play dirty. He can do the, win the dirty ball. He can score. He can... He can you know, break down blanket defences, he can set the play up, he, he talks all around him, he, yeah. he's a leader, um, absolutely an excellent player when, he, when, when he's on, you know, and, and I think Dublin just didn't have enough of them guys this year that was on, James McCarthy coming back from injury, maybe not fully at the races, you know, so look at um, Dublin's going to be, Dublin's going to be there, there, but it's going to need Kilkenny at the, at, at it's top level yet again. Um, the other wing, Party Clifford. What 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 can we not say about Party Clifford? Absolutely excellent, excellent. You know his work rate is absolutely phenomenal. So unselfish. Works like an absolute dog. Um, I probably put you in mind to to, to a brain doer. Yeah. Big time, big time. I'm more yeah. skillful than Brian Dewar, uh, a wee bit more skillful. Um, and I'd, I'd actually go as far to say that he, he, he's a better player than Brian Dewar slightly, and, and that's a statement because Brian Dewar was some player. Um, you know, what, what he gives Kerry is, is, is unbelievable. Um, and, and equally, equally can be said for Sean O'Shea. He's, Okay, he was quiet, quiet in the final. Um, but the championship he had was absolutely outrageous. Is the, the scoring potential he can do and devastation when, when Clifford was out for a couple of games, no problem. He'll win and stand full forward and he'll rack it too. You know, this is this this is a guy I think is an all-around footballer. And and for me, him and him and Rain O'Neill is a two. Him and Ray O'Neill is the two best all-round footballers in Ireland, I, uh, I think. 
you know, for what you want them to do. You know, they can play in various different positions all over the field and be as good as anybody, if not better, in any of them. You know, that's that's unreal. And, and, and something, a big thing that, that I would say about Sean O'Shea and the lads, any lads that played against him, I'll tell you, he's a serious hard tackler. Serious, serious work rate. Uh, big, big man on the field. Big turnovers. You know, he's a serious engine. Can catch a ball over his head, no problem. You know, can score from distance. We've seen some of the scores he kicked absolutely outrageous off the ground as well. You know, so this this, this guy is, is is a phenomenal player. And, you know, all Galway had to do it was easy to say is don't concentrate on your game. I want you to forget about your game and stick to him like glue. You know, and there's only so long you can do that with a good player. I think when the scores were really, really there to be needed in the, in the last five or ten minutes of that game, Sean O'Shea was involved in it. You know, and and, and that's the difference. That's, that's a quality player that knew what he had to do for the team as a team captain on the field. And, and, and if people remember back to even that pass, I remember clear as day. And this is another example of a, a very smart, good, intelligent footballer. He hand passed the ball that all that all party Clifford had to do was run straight onto it. You know, stuff like that, you know, you, you can't teach that. You either have that or you don't. He 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 passed that ball in, in, in a position where he wanted to receive it himself, you know, and that's 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 using his head and that's that's a sign of, of a very intelligent footballer, you know, to do that in real time on the spot, you know, without even thinking about it. He had he, he just has it. Uh, and I think he's a very special and he, he's he's still a young man as well, like David Clifford. I think them boys are the same age and play the minor together. Like they're, they're, these boys are going nowhere. They're going to be around for a while. And hopefully the two of them stay injury free and we, we get to see the beautiful football that they're playing for another while. Mm, yeah, Jesus, Johnny, long way to continue. Like, and I suppose, like moving on to the full forward line, you know, David Clifford it goes there saying, Kerry, Damien Comer, Galway, Shane Walsh, Galway. So I suppose, Johnny, you know, the point we can make in all this, like, and obviously the whole team is probably an unbelievable team but like six forwards isn't it so so good I think that I made this point to Aidan Wilde McCarran there a couple of months ago like it's so good in this current minute in time to have these six lads going about the business because realistically Johnny these six lads are probably some of the best players we've seen play the game in recent years great ambassadors for the clubs kids and keeps you interested in the GA because you pay money every Sunday to go and see these gentlemen Oh, absolutely. listen, you hit the nail on the head, John, 100%. Absolutely top draw. You know, um, I had the pleasure of seeing David Clifford playing in Armagh, you know, uh, in, in the National League. You know, just just different gravy. That's, you know, just different gravy. He taught, like, Aidan Falker is no bad player. He just, he just he made a wee buy out of him and turned him inside out. You know, just... And Aiden tried to get at him. I was standing behind them goals, just on that side. And Aiden tried to rough him up a bit. You know what? <laughs> it was the worst thing he'd done. Because, yeah. uh, you know, and Clifford wasn't even on that long. You know, he, the ball was in the back of the net in no time. Uh, you know, he, he's just... he Seen him as well in, in the Munster final. Last year, down in Killarney, and absolutely unreal. Top, top draw. Serious, serious work rate. Score off both feet. Uh, you think you have him one second, the next the ball is just over the bar, uh, and he does it all the time. Yeah. And everybody falls for the bounce. He's just exceptional and big man. You know when you're standing beside him, he's he's a big able fella. Um, you know and, and courteous fella. You know so it's great to see a, a man of that caliber in the flesh. And, and uh, long may it continue, John, for for young Clifford. Like I said with Sean O'Shea. Um, I felt Comer had Comer had a stellar enough championship as well, and and, and he had serious games at different times. Um, my sort of argument would have been on on Comer and Rain, you know, is that you could you could take Comer out of the out of, out of the Galway team, and and he 
you know, there might be other guys who step up to the plate um, and they could compete. Like we've seen in the all Ireland final, for example, that he was very quiet, you know, and, and, and they were competing, they were bang there. You know, you can't take away in the bar or we've, you know, that's, that's what I'm saying to you. That's how important a player is yeah. and how good a player is. Um, yeah, yeah. There's like a, a question coming to my head, like, it, it, <clears throat> and obviously God willing, really, really, okay, really, really does kind of stay fit for maybe our man next year, and everything goes well for him. But if, if say free and got injured, Johnny, you know, what do you think would be our man's plan B if you get me? To wouldn't have one. Yeah. So the, the lesson is, you, you can't dress it up to anything else. You, you 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 can try and do without it, but you you're you're not going anywhere, and that's. Whatever chance Armagh has of competing at the top table, it's a fully fit rain and wheel, and that's there's no there's no hiding from that. There's, I don't think there's any Armagh fan in the country who would actually come out and disagree with that statement. It's a big statement, and is it harsh on the rest of the Armagh lads? Not really, because I think they'd think the same themselves. You know, he, he's that important to the operation. He's matured that well. You know, he's he's he was a joint captain. You know, uh, along with Aidan Nugent. Who, who, who is another top class player that I think anyway in real honest to God uh, county player and a damn good club player you know um, but Rain like I said because he can he can play in so many different positions and and, and, I'm, and probably I'm sorry a wee bit going on <laughs> probably people say geez you're going on a lot of Rain yeah He's that influential, though. Like, but it, is, kind of, it, it kind of makes the point as well. You know, if I know Paul De Clifford's brilliant, Paul Gein, he's brilliant for Kerry. Kerry, bless the forwards, but it kind of makes the point. It's kind of similar to Kerry. If Kerry didn't have David Clifford, maybe this year, it's hard to know where that All Ireland was going to come from. If he, like you seen against Tyrone last year, Clifford went off, and look what happened. You know, well, 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 well Kerry needs two of them. Kerry, Kerry needs needs Clifford and Sean O'Shea. Yeah, you take, you, you take, like, and this is fact. You take you take you take either of them men out of Kerry and you're winning no all out. That's a fact. That is a fact. You take James McCarthy out of Dublin and you weren't winning all Ireland either. And that's that that you know that's the difference. You know, you see when, when Dublin was at the pump and you can say like I heard statements of it and I'm not saying I'm not I'm again fan. But I heard statements of Kieran Whelan coming out of the Fenton. Fenton was the best midfielder of all time. That's absolutely laughable. He's not even the best player in Dublin of all time. He's not even the best player that played for Dublin when they won all them all Ireland's. You know, so I thought it was, it was a crazy statement. Like for me, James McCarthy is is the best player of all time for Dublin. You know, and closely behind him. Is, is, is a stellar argument for Stephen Cluxton because we've seen how important he has been to the operation and his professionalism as a player and how important he was to the Dublin setup. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, because yeah. I, I can't even notice even with the likes of Brian Fenton. I, I think I wouldn't say maybe standards have dropped within maybe the Dublin Dublin kind of setup and Dublin panel, but it kind of feels maybe since Jim Gavin left, it's nearly like Jim or Brian Fenton hasn't. I know he's got it nominees and bits and pieces. <laughs> Since, but it's early since Gavin has left, maybe Fenton hasn't played his best couple. I don't know. Is that the Jim Gavin effect? Maybe is that Brian Fenton five in a row, watershed, you know, feet up now kind of thing? Or I don't know. It's a leader, it's a leader on the field. And you, you've seen it when McCarthy wasn't there. Dublin looked extremely ordinary. They were out of ideas. The ball was floating around the middle. They didn't know where they were meant to be. They no one to drive the ship, you know. And, 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 and that's fine. You know, just players that just don't have that in them. They're, they're players and, and they're not there to lead. And that's fine. Yeah, every team needs leaders. You know, and, and, and if... And a, a lot of teams... A lot of teams, John, you'll only know who the leaders are in the dress room or on the field. The people, the fans won't even know who the leaders are. Mm. You know, but you can see it when they're not playing. And definitely, when McCarthy's not fully fit... Dublin don't look near the animal that they are, you know, and that's, that's, and the evidence is there to be seen, and there's no, there's no wonder he has as many All-Irelands as he has, and as many All-Stars as he has, Mm -hmm. he's a phenomenal, phenomenal player, Uh, and any, any guy that played with him, or played against him, will just tell you what what to think of him, he's, he's, he's absolutely excellent, Um, so, you know, look at that's, that's a different story for another day. And back to 
back to what we were talking about with the full forward line, um, you know, there's there's that man now playing up and down with Kevin McCord Crooks. Um, it's look, I can't say much about it. I left I left my own club. Um, I played in Dublin for a couple of years when I came back from New York. Uh, you know, but look at. I wasn't the player that he is, or or, or I wasn't as important to my club, uh, you know. So as he is, so I know the player at a lower level, but you know, it's it was an awful. It's tough. It is very tough for 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 a club of, of their stature to lose a player like that to kill McCut Crooks, mm-hmm. especially after the year that he had, um, and they did lose him as well before, you know. So listen, it, it's it's. It's tough, but he look at he, he is a phenomenal player, um, and I'm going to like to see more of him for Kevin McCud. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him maybe in a couple of club games in Manchester, mm. um, and see how that goes. And, and you wouldn't know, you wouldn't know who and also might have a crack at him now on the mm-hmm. um, Could be interesting, you know. So uh, yeah, yeah. When he's on form, oh. he's He's an absolute wizard. But um, yeah, yeah. Like even in the even in the dub club final there, um, I know it was a low scoring game there a couple of weeks ago, and uh, our good friend Aaron Prendergast was kind of filling me in. I, I watched the highlights of the game, and you know it was some permission there. Shane Walsh, Kill McCud probably were not winning that final. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I, I do agree with you. He, he was probably their best player. Um, you know, he was probably there best player. Um, but I thought the standard of the club final. To be honest, I thought it was poor enough for for their for the Dublin standards. Yeah, uh, I felt uh, I was a wee bit surprised, you know, with 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 Mannion being out injured. I was a wee bit surprised that that the Fina didn't get over the line. Um, and probably uh, we just you know listen, but Dublin Dublin club football is very tough. Mm. Extremely extremely tough and competitive. Um, and that's why I probably expected more out of it that night in the final than, than probably the viewing that we got for a low-scoring affair. Um, you know, there was big chances for both teams and, and they were missed. There's no point in saying there wasn't. You know, so maybe Nafina's is still a wee bit young and a wee bit more mature to do, uh, but I think they're a damn good team. I think they're a team that has a lot of potential. Um it's funny, you know, uh, I was actually asked a friend of mine there the other day, but he, he was at the game as well, and he thought it just wasn't, he's a referee in Dublin, and he thought it just wasn't, wasn't the final that, that everyone thought it was going to be. But look at, Ken McCord and I care. Um, no, no. To them, it was all about getting over the line. You know, the whole idea of Shane Walsh uh, going to Ken McCord is, 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 there's no doubt about it. People can call it or say what they want. The idea in there is to win the Ireland club. There's absolutely no mistake in that. That's why he's yeah. there. Um, you know, bit cringy. You know, him getting carried into the clubhouse after playing a couple of games. You know, I think uh, I, I think it was probably a kick in the teeth for some of the people in Galway. And, mm. You know. It was a wee bit disingenuous. It just wasn't nice. Uh, I didn't feel um, probably. Oh no, well, look. I, I, in fairness, John, I've seen a couple of more the club videos, and yeah, I think that's not bad in comparison. But <laughs> yeah, well, look at. Um, at, at but I know what you're that, saying. I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I, just, I just think I just think it was a wee bit, you know, it was a wee bit disingenuous on on on, on some of the other people. You know, that's it's hard enough for them to lose a player of that caliber. Uh, to, to, to up the club in Dublin, you know. So, yeah. Listen, I'm not taking away from the father. Like I said, I, I I played in Dublin. I know. I learned an awful lot. And I was glad I played in it to an extent. It cost me a couple of medals with my club, but you know the experience of playing up there, the top level, top top teams week in week out. Even the Dublin league is a tough tough league to play in. It's absolutely brilliant, helter skelter type football. The conditioning on teams and on, on, on the players you know so I you know I really enjoyed it uh, it was top class ball um, you know so listen Walsh is going to have a good time up there he's going to be playing top class football and just to be interested to see how it's going to work 
uh, especially if, if which I suspect Kill McCall could go on a bit of a run there, the, the favourites for the All Ireland, the go of a bit of a run there in Leinster. Things could just get awkward enough for, for Galway, um, Galway being back or being back as well. So, mm-hmm. you know, um, I've heard the rumour mill spinning and ready that there's 20 teams back training. Um, so it's, 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 supposed, it's supposed to be next month, isn't it, Jim? It is, yeah, but I've heard, <laughs> I've heard different things, you know, so uh, yeah, it'd be interesting. Uh, I wouldn't just want to disclose any more information. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I'll, not be, I'll, not, I'll not be hanging the cabin lads at the dry down, you know, but... Uh, <laughs> 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 Landing them, it? Landing them, it? Land it, was it. Well, it, wasn't, it, wasn't, was it wasn't, it wasn't you told me they need all the training they can get, is that what Oh Lord, and you're a pup, you're a pup. I thought well, the, the gown end of things obviously they're pre- prepared for the Ulster, so uh, I doubt they'll be doing much training at the minute. But uh, yeah, obviously prepare for the Ulster campaign. But uh, yeah, it's 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 goes to, go to show you want to get that step ahead. It's and then a fair for fairs back to this point that there is county lads, you know, back training already, Johnny. You know, October, some county lads get back to it. That is a long, long year. Well, probably look at it. It's something we we actually didn't chat about here. Um, Oh, before we just just change up again, uh, just to finish all this off, uh, your footballer of the year, fairly straightforward. Is that, is that a serious question? <laughs> I've asked you worse. I've asked you worse. Don't worry. <laughs> Go on. Well, I, I can vouch for that. Definitely, I've asked me worse, but <laughs> David Clifford hands down. Um, yeah, he's not bad, Johnny. I think would we, we just would just start him for. Uh, I would, I would. I'd give, him, I'd, I'd give him the tip of my hat just, yeah, just about it, yeah. Whoa, whoa, he was wearing loud shorts there last week or the week before, or I think it was the first club, so that transfer. I'd, 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 I'd even forgive him for that. I'd even forgive him. <laughs> I can't really think they could be, they could lose that game for him wearing them shorts, but that's another story for another day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, and young football of the year, my man. Lee Gannon, Ethan Doherty, Jack Lynn, who was getting it? I don't know. Your guess is good as mine. Uh, Jacqueline. 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 Think so. Just yeah. about. Yeah, Galway. Galway all Ireland finals. I um, yeah, well, that's you. You, you probably because of the run that they had. It, you know, and she's say he's not a bad baller either, is he? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think Mr. Clay would, 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 would there be an argument? Would there be an argument there for uh, for any arm players being in the shortlist? No, young players. Um, oh God! What class of players is young? <laughs> yeah, go on. That's insane. It's it's under twenty three, I think, isn't it, or under twenty one? So, um, and that's interesting as well. All the young uh, player of the year nominees haven't made any, haven't got an all star. So I'm not sure if that's happened any other year. Yeah, well, that's it's something. Look, I, I think. <laughs> They sort of call it the 16th All Star, don't they? Like you know, it's 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 a way of getting a player that maybe should have had an All Star in. Um, mm. You know, uh, look, I, I think I think he's I think we call it right. I, I think he's probably the right man for it. And they got to the All Ireland final. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's any complaints. Uh, to to be brutally honest, I think it should be a player that's in his first season or two. Mm. Um. Now, not an ASC joins the panel when he's twenty-five, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, th- I think I think what I think, the age bracket is under twenty-one, isn't it, or under twenty-three? Like, what is I'm the not, age? I'm not even sure. So they've changed the age brackets of football that much. I don't even know what day of the week it is or what, what the hell we're playing anymore. But um, <laughs> yeah, there's too much change, Johnny. And then I know Kevy was saying about the selection committee, but I think he got the first spot on the WhatsApp group. A lot of journalists and everyone will get their say for the selection committee. Yeah, well, that's that was the other thing. The selection committee and, and, and the seats at the table and, and who's got more say than, than the rest. And um, look, at it, it's it's like we're we're good enough GEA men and we don't even know the full process. So yeah, you know, like it's it's smoke and mirrors at this stage, smoking guns and mirrors. <laughs> so look, I, I I don't know. Uh, listen, at the end of the day. Opinions are like assholes, and everybody has one, so we'll just leave it at that, you know. 
I do, I do, I will give you this, John. Um, you said at the start of it that, that you, you said at the start of it that I think it's as close to an all star team as, as they've got in the it's thing. So, spot on, yeah, yeah. So, I, like I said, you know, if it's my own club, mate, it's only because he's, he's he, he, you know, there's a couple of arguments, and there's always going to be a couple of arguments, but it, I, I think, yeah, on balance, it, it isn't bad. Yeah, no, I think notable candidates, Tom O'Sullivan, yeah. Rain O'Neill, Ethan Rafferty. You're going to, listen, you're going to have yeah. a couple, it's Shane McGuigan, you're going to have a couple. Um, Brendan Rodgers. Yeah, I do I, I do think that there's, there's no big clear cut there. And, and, and uh, you know, I do think that the, the journalists and the guys and, and, the, and the committee, they didn't do too bad. Yeah, I, I have to give them full credit because I, I did kind of tweet and share my old socials that it's probably the first team in years where there can't be a whole pile of debate. And then, of course, you'll obviously have lots of people uh, throwing names into the hat as well. And, sorry, Johnny, you're saying before we, we sit, uh, switch subject there, I think was it, um, was it the management? Or what, what were yeah, yeah, I just wanted, I just wanted, to, yeah, I just wanted to say that, 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 that uh, it's sort of a bit, it's a work commitment in, and, and we're seeing it up and down the country. Um, I'm hearing about it all over the place and we've seen it at county level how tough a job it was to, to secure a manager uh, and, and, and the management process you know Rascommon went on for a long time uh, Donny Gall went on for Jesus it felt like about 10 years <laughs> uh, <laughs> it did take a long time Johnny I would say you thought maybe you were going to get <laughs> Yeah, I thought, I thought anybody could throw the hat in the ring and get it there. And let's not forget our neighbours, Monaghan. They, 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 they did an absolute Glasgow fair of it as well. Over there I too. felt so sorry for Monaghan. I just oh, yeah, there was, there was a serious process going on there and breakdown, breakdown in process. Um, you know, they could be happy Monaghan. enough. Like Marty Curry, he done excellent work with my lovely county cabin here in Castle Rahan, and then Vinnie Curry, the brother. So I think Monaghan can be definitely happy. No, oh, there's no doubt about it. Monon, Monon is going to be very happy. And I think in the end, um, they actually collectively have, have, have a, stellar, uh, a stellar management team. Mm. You know, there's guys with a lot of coaching experience involved there. And that's what actually I think Monon's going to need. You did say um, that, didn't you? Yeah, I'll be, I'll be hoping that like Monon isn't the finished article. When you're the finished article, you can be pulling in a big, big high role of manager there. That's that that's that that has experience in getting teams over the line for all errands. Yeah. But not and also on that, John, these guys are getting hard to get. Like, yeah. Where, where are they? You know, like, like there's good managers, absolutely. Monica Rook's name floating around there as a, a, a top operator. Yeah, he 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 he, he done he, he won a couple of ulcers uh, with Manon. You know, he's he's won a championship there with Glen. He, he he's the Derry Lynn man. He you know he's he's very experienced. Yeah. So, and many all errands has he won? Yeah. And like, would he just be like? I think I've made this point. He's in the WhatsApp group. Would he just be happy enough doing his bit with Glen Mahara? You know, going. Oh, for no, 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 no. I wouldn't say that. He's very, No, no, no. I wouldn't say that at all. I'd I'd, I'd say like I, I would feel from Glen um, that they've a lot more to give and and the. Of huge potential, but I'm sure from the from from the outside as well that like Marquis is down there and he's a good fella and anybody anybody you know that knows him you know has a bad bad word to say about him. I wasn't being smart in what I said there. Uh, I, I was just say I was just saying that how tough a job it is to find a manager like that. Yeah. You know, it's it's they're not everywhere, and Marquis would feel that Len. Was probably unfinished business. The big thing for them was winning the championship. Now the big thing for them was going back to back and winning another one. Yeah, they've gained a wee bit of experience. He done a great job against Scotland last year. He'd be looking to progress and go. For, he'll be targeting also. There's absolutely no doubt about it. And if he's targeting also, he's targeting all Ireland. You know that's without a shadow of a doubt. So um, I think a man of his caliber. That's what I'm saying to you. A very few and far between. Mm. Um, and and it's not appealing. That that's why I wanted the subject. It is. It, it's these processes are getting crazy because it's not yeah. appealing anymore to be a county manager. 
No. The worker has to go in. The slack. Has, yeah, and the worker has to go in at club level. And that's why it's there's so many club jobs from junior, intermediate to senior, all over every county. There's any amount of them because it is getting ridiculous. It is getting ridiculous. I have had phone calls there from junior clubs, intermediate clubs, a uh, couple of senior clubs talking different things, and it is crazy the expectations of what a junior club is looking from strength conditioning coach to nutritionist to uh, to video analysis done to um, stats stats done. You have to have stats sports GPS systems. The whole thing is getting ridiculous. I'm there saying, wait a minute, they can't fucking kick a ball 25 yards and you're looking all this here. This, this is, this, but this is what I'm saying. Yeah. Some, some, of the, some of the junior clubs, John, are struggling to get 20 lads out to training. Like, yeah. And they, they can't get the basics right, Johnny. What's that saying? If you, if you can't master the small things, you will not be fit to master the big things. Yeah, but I just think I just think some some committees and different things need to take a step back here and, and let's get back down to coaching. Let's get a bit of coaching done in, in, in simple, simple uh, game of football that we play. First of all, I'm not saying at different levels. It's, it's, it's People doesn't need to mistake me and apples and oranges here. Like, there's top club, there's top club teams need GPS, uh, video analysis. I use it myself, absolutely. I, I, I use it with Castle Blaney, uh last year and stuff like that. That's needed at that level. That's fine. They're 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 senior they're senior challenger teams, yeah. but junior and intermediate need to concentrate on younger players basics. coming through and the basics and the coaching, and they need to be coached into into getting to the level that they can progress. You know, and and I think a wee bit you have to be a wee bit more realistic. A reality check. A reality check, and not even that, but. The funding of some of these operations is going to cost. Yeah, but it's yeah. absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, it's, it's all very. Yeah, money no, would have rather spent in the youth within the club. Like I, 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 I was chatting to the junior team, and this is a god's honest truth. I was chatting to the junior team that's looking that, that that's in, in in the market now for a manager. They're yeah. mildly me in the underage. I said, I said to myself alone a second here. You, you, you're mildly me in the underage, and this is the sort of structure you want in place for your senior team. I was like, this is this is this is where, where the thing is wrong. Yeah. You need to be putting that into underage. So you're 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 uh, getting the players together that you don't need to manipulate to, to facilitate a, a team at underage that you can have your own team. Yeah. Like that's what needs to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, just the basics. No, because <clears throat> You make a good point uh, regarding the GPS uh, tracking systems. Uh, Stephen Ivers, a uh, strength conditioning coach um, at the minute, I was talking to him last night in the podcast, and he was kind of saying that I think some of the Calvin Gales lads, I think maybe seven or eight of them, signed up to kind of get the GP- GPS kind of it could have to go and buy themselves obviously because clubs obviously wouldn't be able to probably afford but the times are in getting the gps bits and pieces in but it just goes to show seven lads who wanted them and kind of got them and you know that's not a like a detriment and any other lads didn't want to get them but i suppose it does go to show if you want to get to them high standards them high level for yourself the team you probably do need to go that extra mile as well oh yeah see this is it and, and then you're, you know the club next door can have it and their friends are all at college and they have it and we don't have it and this is this is where the spire is out of control, you know. Oh well, should they're getting hot food after training, and why are we not getting hot food after training? You know, again, you can't pass the ball twenty five yards, but you're looking this, 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 and this. Yeah. And is that is all these things going to make you be fit to pass that ball twenty five yards? No. The only thing that's going to make you do that is you yourself practicing how to get better at your game. You know, it's some of these things are not realistic. And fair play to them fellas for for bouncing up for themselves and getting their GPS systems. That's that's absolutely fine. Cross cross put in the thing as well. Uh, and this is this is you know this is a team that's only have to win the county title. A couple of years ago, they had to pony up half the money for the for the for the systems, you know. Um, and the club picked up the rest of the bill. Yeah. You know, did a bit of a fundraiser or whatever and stuff like that. And, you know. Being pra- pra- pragmatic about the whole thing, but but to be expected in small small clubs to fork out crazy amounts of money for 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 some of them, I know I know uh, different coaches talking to coaches all over the place. I know coaches at six or seven of these GPS 
uh, systems went missing. Boys forgot to take them off. Uh, weren't, weren't using showers at all, obviously, with COVID. Took the bloody things home uh, after the game. Ended up getting lost. The vests were lost. And, 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 and the thing oh, in the tracking system. Putting them into the wash. You know, crazy things. Three grand a pop uh, out the window. You know, so it's 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 a big undertaking. And, and also, John, uh, people's forgetting. Yes, who, and who's going to look at this data? Who's going to, who's going to download the data and go through all the data? Or what, or what the hell is the point to have in the GPS system? Mm. But that takes time as well for somebody, a volunteer in a club, let's say, to go through all that uh, data of all the players uh, in all the games and see that, that what they're doing. You know, or again, if they can't do that, go back to the manager to do it. And like I said, that's why it isn't appealing because that manager now has to check in with all them different areas. And I've seen it myself from, from management senior level, club level. It's 40 hours a week. That's what it takes. 35, 40 hours a week between talking to players, meeting with players, talking to physios, GPS systems, stats, video analysis, you name it, that's what it is. Yeah. And organising your sessions, organising the way you want, you have to play, uh, yeah. and what way you're meant to play. It's, it's a big operation and that's why it's not appealing and that's why uh, different clubs up and down the country are struggling to get managers. Big time. Like, I suppose regarding the county kind of scene, even like the Colin O'Rourke having to I suppose he retired from the teaching. I know um, who else has gone into the management? Kevin McStay. I think he is Kevin. He might be on a, a, even a career break. I think he is he in the army. I think uh, Kevin McStay. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. And yeah, he's, he's gone in with the Mayo lads and yeah, like county wise, maybe that's why Donegal maybe struggled. Monaghan struggled. Like you literally have to park the whole lot. Like I know by Kevin McStay I was watching the piece of Don RT there but a month ago. He looks absolutely driven to, you know, get them over over that uh Sam McGuire line. But you just have to put your life on hold. I know club is getting very much time consuming. I think it was a you said to me, you know, the club game is like the county game from about ten years ago. So what's that saying? It's like it's like a it's like a country for old men or whatever. It, it, it's just for the young men coming up and fair play to us common getting David Burke in, but uh you wonder how all sustainable this is going to be, uh, Johnny. Well, it's, 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 the fact of the matter is, John, it isn't. It's not going to be sustainable. And, you know, every once in a while, when we go through hard times, it's not that long ago from when we went through them before in 07, 08, 09. You know, that, that day is going to happen again. And, it's coming, I think, yeah. Uh, yeah, and it is. And there's going to be cutbacks and there's going to be uh, a dose of reality that, you know, that we can't, we, we don't need all these things at certain levels, certain levels, certain levels to do. There's absolutely no doubt about it. You know, back your argument with McStay, you know, and, and these guys, you're right, you're correct. Uh, some of these jobs are, does suit, you know, but a county manager now is a full time position. That's what I'm saying, yeah. That's, there's no, like, you know, to go and to do the work that has to be done for county management, it's a full time job. And the, the uh, abuse to get the abuse. To, like me, me, me and you've had this conversation yeah. loads of times. But the abuse managers get online, and like you'd, you'd like some of these keyboard warriors to put on the banister vest, vest themselves. Well, the, the, uh, you, you're hundred percent right, and you know they, they can sit by the fire there in the evening and 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 tweet away and and give abuse to the manager, and he hasn't this, he doesn't have a clue. How do they know what's going on in training? How do they know what your man's doing if he's training or if he's not training, if he's there, if he's not there, if he's carrying the injury? They don't know. They don't know. They don't know what goes on in his in, 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 in any setup. You know, I seen it myself. I seen getting questioned and oh you didn't play so he says he wasn't there. So how can you play a man him not there? He wasn't there, no. He did oh I didn't know he wasn't there. Yeah, it's not your it's not your business that he's not there. <laughs> I do you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. craziness, and and this is at a low level. You can just imagine hyping it up to, to county level, county standard. You know, we've seen the abuse that, that like Declan Bonner, for example, put was getting like you know, crazy. It, they're gonna, the, there's the keyboard warriors won't stop them to drive all these monitors away, and then there's nobody to do the job. But that, but it has it got to that stage there, Johnny. I know I don't want to kind of prolong the prolong the point on it, but like, is that why Tony Gall struggled for so long? Russ Common took a bit of time, Monaghan took a bit of time. I know, obviously, ourselves were probably lucky, you know, Mickey Graham and Kira McGinney, the 
you know, our man, Calvin made true and true, no problem, can imagine we're probably looking in that regard. But is it getting that stage, Johnny? I know the rumour was geographically for Donegal wasn't safe, but it's nearly getting that stage where county county managers are saying, you know, sorry for cursing there, but affect this, you know, why am I bothering my arse for one for a better phrase, you know? Yeah, but it's 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 everywhere. It seems to be it's 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 like a poison, it's 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 toxic, it, it's it seems to be a dumb thing now, you're like you know, and and I I don't want to I don't want to get into it, but I'm going to call it a spade a spade because it needs to be said. We seen we seen a, a coach that's, a, that's involved in in in, in various setups uh, and actually doing coaching, and he made a comment about Ashley McCombin and Wicklow completely wrong. And I have no point. I, I have absolutely no problem. I'd say it to his face that he's completely wrong because he's completely wrong because he should know better because he was involved in them setups and he wouldn't like it being said. And there's no doubt about it. You know. Ashing doesn't need any way to tell him that he has a tight job to do. But wait till I tell you something. People should be coming around and saying, well, do you know what? Fair play to Ashing for going to, down the wick, though. Fair play to you for going down and trying to uh, get them competing again at a lower level and getting a wee bit of structure involved down there. Do you know what? Fair juice to him. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you one thing. He didn't think it was beneath him anyway. And that'll maybe tell a different story with some of these teachers. That's another thing. But I, I, I just thought it was disingenuous. I thought it was it left a bad taste in my mouth. And, and with, yeah. with enough abuse going on around the country on, on poor managers and, and different operations, you know, I, I thought it was it was I didn't like it at all, you know. And and, and that's 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 what we're going to get. Um, because now it's open season. It's a dumb thing. That everybody sees like. Twitter on. Oh, I'll have a go as well. You know, it's it's. And like I said, they're not going to stop to drive these these managers away and coaches away. Um, you know. And I'd to... like to see the man who tweeted that take the Wicklow job himself. I know he was involved with a like a weaker county there a couple of years ago himself. But you know, it's uh, what's that saying, Johnny? Glass glass houses, all that. Yeah, but, but, and, and all all I'm saying about the about the, that point was, and like I said, I, I have no problem saying them. You know, he can do better. You just do better, you know, and, and listen, he, he, and, and there's a good chance that maybe the fellow didn't mean it like that and, he, you know, there's a bit of crack and blah, blah, whatever. That's fine. That's fine, you know, but and I think I think when we're on online and, you know, I and don't get me wrong, John, I was guilty of it myself until before I got into management. I thought I knew it all from going to football games and you think, but you don't realise to what it's involved until you're in doing the job and you know what, it, you know, and like again, I'm talking at a lot lower level than what these guys are and, you know, as as McGee does say, the biggest, the biggest thing that he has to compete with is the noise, mm. noise from the outside. Yeah. You know, it's hard to lock yourself away from it, you know. Exactly. And, and, and Tom, Dick and Harry and uh, all the crazy lads of the day that we know they're in every county, and don't get me wrong, they're football mad and fair play to them, and they go they go to a lot of football. But they would be tossing these guys out on the street, and never mind on, on 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 maybe maybe our phones here, maybe maybe with twenty different accounts set up, and and they're and they're abusing flat out and every one of them. You know, it's absolutely yeah. crazy. You know, and, and yeah. I, I would like to see GA fans get back to just enjoying football and and, mm. and uh, you it's know. A- yeah, no, I think I think the players can kind of come under that bracket as well because it's easy for lads to tweet and oh, you know, Paddy didn't have a good game and why did he not do this and blah 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 and like keyboard warriors I think are always going to be an unfortunate thing, Johnny. But I think the COVID like elevated a lot of that, whereas people probably have a bit more time in their hands. Maybe they're working from home, watching these games, they're doing X, Y, and Z, and it just it's kind of like an unfortunate way of life. You know, people just picking up their phones, abusing managers, abusing players. Like, and I just I don't know when you know there can be like an. I know Twitter are still right, still need to legislate. You know, you know Twitter's not only Instagram, Facebook, but to legislate something, whereas people need the passports to get onto these social media websites to stop the abuse coming in because it's definitely not helping our uh, product, uh, Johnny. No, and, and and you know, and not even it's not even just managers, but it's become open season on referees. It's become we've seen with the with at, at, at every level from underage to the senior level about uh, referees getting abused referees getting assaulted you know it's become an open season on everything mm. and i think uh, a few workshops come around local clubs uh, is, is something that needs to happen mm-hmm. for underage for invite everybody into the club mm-hmm. 
and have a chat about it from all their age, coaching the parents, everyone else, to conduct themselves in a certain way. And, and at the end of the day, it's an amateur sport. It, it's a treasure. It's something we we, we, we we die for, we enjoy. You know, it's it's not, you know, and, 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 and I will say this because I'll be honest, I also would applaud that gentleman that, that uh, on a different circumstance. I know he made that comment and he, and, and he, he since removed his comment and fair play to him for that. But I would also say about the good work that he does in coaching, the good work that he, he he's teaching other coaches and putting a big effort in and, and that there. And, 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 and 100%. I think genuinely can say that. Yeah, it's their lucky, but he should know better not to. Yeah, but I, I think he should. And I think a workshop, if them boys maybe would have a workshop along with their coaching there would be a good idea for all these coaches as well and say, look, yeah. you know, we, we, we need we need to we need to do better in, in, in a few areas to improve improve our game. And I would definitely feel that the abuse towards referees and managers and coaches needs to be needs to be stamped out. Mm. Mm. Just an unfortunate thing. It's like getting bad in the world, Johnny. I don't know when it is going to be stopped. It's just an unfortunate way of life. But uh I think that'll do it. If there was anything else you wanted to touch on, or we're good enough. Happy no, enough. I think I think, <laughs> yeah. I think we covered a lot there. We did. As usual, we're way overboard, but look at that. Uh, ah, no, it's good. Debate's good. Debate's always good. Uh, yeah. People will love to hear this because there's not much. Uh, well, look, it's club action, but people love these pods and uh, listening to yourselves and uh, everyone. Everyone else is on it, but uh, Johnny. That was an absolute pleasure. Uh, I believe uh, herself has some lovely luxury gar- uh, garland uh, coming up towards Christmas. So uh, get on it, get it, get on it. I believe. Yeah, well, going to my house has turned into like a my house has turned into a bit of a shame here. We were... Oh, lovely! Yeah. Yeah. So that's only one, and we have uh, we had a bit of a photo shoot here for a luxury garlands. Um, so uh, we done it la- the last. Well, I think she's had it now the last six or seven years, but. Last year was a big hit. Um, so, yeah, we had a camera crew here the last couple of weeks and they're doing different things and um, there's gardens and the stairs and the fireplace. So, I have to I have to keep the blinds closed or neighbours will think I'm crazy. We're way in the head, you know. But, um, no, she's doing she's doing a brilliant job. So, it's great to yeah. see, you know. And, and uh, who doesn't love Christmas, John? Love Christmas. Love Christmas. <laughs> we have to get through Halloween first, though. Let's get through Halloween first. Um, but, uh, yeah, that'll do it, Johnny. Johnny Berta, former Cross McGlenn and Armagh footballer. Great to see you again. Lots discussed, lots good to catch up. And uh, thanks for joining me. And of course, this podcast is brought to you by orgretchel.com. Use your local JMAC podcast to get 15% off on their website. Johnny Berta, thanks very much. Start August Bonnet. <laughs>